you guys, this is Mr. Millings, and in this video, we are going to learn how to write unbalanced chemical equations. And before we do so, we should probably talk about what a chemical equation is. It says right here that a chemical equation uses chemical formulas and symbols to describe what takes place in a chemical reaction. All right, so if we take a look at this example here, if we visually represent what's going on here, we're taking two little molecules of hydrogen gas and we're going to react it with one molecule of oxygen gas and they're going to react together and they're going to produce two molecules of water all right so one way that we can look at that is by saying that we have two molecules of hydrogen reacting with one molecule of oxygen to produce two molecules of uh, liquid water and another way that we can say this is that we have two moles of hydrogen gas reacting with one mole of oxygen gas to produce two moles of liquid water. Okay, so here is a visual representation of a chemical reaction. And what we see right here is an actual chemical equation, a chemical equation that is using different chemical formulas and symbols and these little coefficients to tell a story, to, to, to describe what is taking place on a molecular level uh, to the different atoms and compounds in a chemical reaction. So once again, we can say that either two molecules of hydrogen gas are reacting with one molecule of oxygen gas to produce two molecules of water, or we can say that two moles of hydrogen gas is reacting with one mole of oxygen gas to produce two moles of water. Okay, so once again, a chemical equation is a chem uh, uses chemical formulas and symbols to describe what takes place during a chemical reaction. And in this video, we are going to start learning how to write chemical equations. But before we do that, let's take a look at the different parts of a chemical equation. All right, so let's take a look at the different parts of a chemical equation. And it says right here that there are many different symbols used in a chemical equation that help to describe the chemical reaction taking place. So if we take a look at a chemical equation, we can break the chemical equation down into two parts. Everything to the left side of the arrow are called the reactants. Those are the things that you're starting with. Those are the things that are going to mix together. Everything to the right of the arrow are called the products. This is what's left over after the reactants get done mixing together and reacting with one another. You will have the products, everything that's left over. So everything on the left are the reactants. Everything on the right are the products. And that is separated by this little arrow right here, which is similar to an equal sign in a mathematical expression or equation. This little arrow here typically means yields, forms, or produces. So if we take a look at this once again, we have two moles of hydrogen gas reacting with one mole of oxygen gas to yield, to form, or to produce two moles of water. All right, and so if we take a look down here, here are all the different little symbols that you might start seeing in different chemical reactions that you come across in a first year inorganic chemistry course. So I would pause the video and take a few moments to just familiarize yourself with some of the, uh, the little symbols that you might see in a chemical equation. So now that we know the basics of a chemical equation, let's start to form and write our own unbalanced chemical equations from different little word equations. Okay, so it says right here in example one that we need to write the unbalanced chemical equation. And whenever we're writing a chemical equation, it's important to have a periodic table of elements. And in fact, this is a special periodic table. It is a periodic table of ions, and it's gonna show you the different ionic charges of the different elements. And this will help you to write the different chemical formulas. And if you remember in an earlier video, we actually learned how to write type one, type two, type three binary ionic comp, uh, type one and type two binary ionic compounds and type three binary compounds as well as acids. So I would refer to that and go ahead and click that little card in the top right corner that just appeared to familiarize yourself with, with writing chemical formulas. So it says right here, we need to write the unbalanced chemical equation for this right here. It says solid sodium metal reacts with chlorine gas to produce solid sodium chloride. Okay, so let's take a look at this. What's reacting together? If we read this very carefully, it says that solid sodium metal reacts with chlorine gas. So solid sodium metal, what is the chemical symbol for sodium? Sodium or elemental sodium is just Na with no charge at all, right? It has zero charge and it's in the solid state, right? And this is gonna react with, so we'll put a plus, chlorine gas. Now, if you remember, 
chlorine, which is right here on our periodic table of elements, is uh, one of the seven diatomic molecules or seven diatomic atoms. If it's not bonded to another atom on the periodic table, it's always bonded to itself. So this is going to be Cl2, and this also has no charge at all. It's completely neutral, and it says that this is in the gaseous state. And this is going to produce, if we read this right here, to produce, we'll put our little arrow, solid sodium chloride. So we know sodium is right here on our periodic table of elements, and it forms positive one ions. In fact, all the metals in group one form positive one ions. And chloride, sodium chloride, right, is what it says right here. So what is chloride? Chloride is Cl, and if we take a look over here, it forms a negative one ion. And it says that this stuff here is solid, right? It's in the solid state. So there we go. There is our unbalanced chemical equation. And typically you're not going to write these ionic charges that you see right here. So we can just go ahead and write Na solid reacts with chlorine gas to produce NaCl in the solid state. And that will be our answer. That will be our unbalanced chemical uh, equation for this little word equation right here. Let's take a look at another one. All right, in this one right here, once again, we're going to write the unbalanced chemical equation, and it says aqueous sodium phosphate is going to react. So let's see what's reacting. Aqueous sodium phosphate reacts with sodium chloride in solution to form insoluble calcium phosphate and aqueous sodium chloride. So there's a lot going on here. So let's take a look at what's reacting together. It says aqueous sodium phosphate. So we know sodium is Na with a positive one charge if we take a look over here. And we know that phosphate, if we look at our uh, polyatomic ion list, phosphate is going to be right here, right? It's going to be right here. It's PO43 minus. PO4, 3 minus, right? And so these ionic charges don't add up to zero. So we're going to need a 3 right here. And it says that this stuff is aqueous, which means it's dissolved in water. And then it says this is reacting with sodium chloride. Sodium is Na plus. Chloride is Cl minus. These two ionic charges add up to zero. And it says that this is uh, in solution. Anytime it's in solution, that means it's dissolved in water. And so what's going to end up happening is that these guys are going to form insoluble calcium phosphate so calcium if we take a look right here is ca plus two or two plus and phosphate if we take a look uh, once again right here is po4 three minus these two ionic charges don't add up to zero so it looks like we're going to need three of these and two of these and it says that this stuff here is insoluble it's not going to dissolve in water and last but not least, this is going to also end up with aqueous sodium chloride. So Na plus Cl minus Aq. So it's a little long right here and we're about to condense it. But there you go. There is your unbalanced chemical equation. And if we want to write this without the ionic charges, we can go ahead and do that. We'll just say Na3PO4Aq plus NaCl. AQ and this is going to end up producing CA3 PO42 solid plus NaCl AQ. All right, so there is our unbalanced chemical equation for this little word equation right here. Let's take a look at another example. In this example, it says we have solid copper metal reacting with sulfuric acid to yield aqueous copper to sulfate, water, and sulfur dioxide. So what are the reactants here? Well, it says right here that solid copper metal is reacting with sulfuric acid. All right, so let's get that first. Let's get everything to the left of the arrow first. We have solid copper metal. Solid copper metal is elemental copper, and it has no charge at all. And it says this stuff is in the solid state. And this is going to end up reacting with sulfuric acid. So hopefully you remember how to write your, your, uh, your acid formulas. If not, you can click that little card in the top right-hand corner. And that will, uh, that will show you a video that we went over before on how to write the chemical formulas for acids. But sulfuric acid is H2SO4. And all acids are always going to be aqueous, AQ. 
and it says this stuff is going to yield two yield aqueous copper two sulfate so copper two sulfate is cu with the two plus charge and sulfate is so4 with a two minus charge right with a two minus charge and it says that this stuff too is aqueous water is also one of the products here that's in the liquid state and it says sulfur dioxide is our final product here so sulfur dioxide is so2 and this stuff's going to be in the gaseous state all right so there is our unbalanced uh, chemical equation and if you want to write it without the ionic charges you can go ahead and do that you will end up with cus plus h2so4 aq and this is going to end up producing cuso4 aq plus some liquid water plus some sulfur dioxide gas so that will be your unbalanced chemical equation for the little word equation up above. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, in this example it says hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas is going to react with nitrogen monoxide gas. So what are the two reactants here? Well, it says hydrogen gas. And if you remember, hydrogen here is one of those diatomic uh, elements. It's one of the seven diatomic molecules or atoms on the periodic table of elements. And so if it's not bonded to itself, uh, I'm sorry, if it's not bonded to another atom on the periodic table of elements, it's always going to be bonded to itself. Okay, so hydrogen gas is going to be H2, H2 gas, and all elements on the periodic table are going to have no charge at all. And this is going to react with nitrogen monoxide. So nitrogen monoxide gas right and this is going to end up forming water h2o in the liquid state plus nitrogen gas now if we remember nitrogen is also one of those seven diatomic atoms or molecules on the periodic table and this will have no charge also and this is in the gaseous state and if we wanted to write this without the the ionic charges we can just go ahead and get rid of them but here is your unbalanced chemical equation for this little word equation right here hydrogen gas reacts with nitrogen monoxide gas to produce water and nitrogen gas let's take a look at another problem all right in this last example it says aluminum metal aluminum metal is going to react with hydrochloric acid right so what are the two reactants here we have aluminum metal aluminum is al and this is in the solid state right and aluminum metal doesn't have any charge at all it's elemental aluminum and all the atoms on the periodic table of elements uh, are going to be neutral unless they start to lose or gain electrons or or or, uh, or bond with other atoms all right so we have aluminum metal reacting with so plus hydrochloric acid hydrochloric acid is hcl right hydrogen forms positive one ions chloride is negative one and all acids are always aq and so when these two react with one another, they're going to produce, let's take a look, solid aluminum chloride. So aluminum we know is Al. If we take a look over here, it forms three plus ions. And if we take a look at chloride, chloride is right here. It forms Cl minus ions. These two ionic charges don't add up to zero, so we'll need three of these. It says this stuff's in a solid state and hydrogen gas hydrogen if you remember is one of the seven diatomic molecules on the periodic table of elements so there we go there is our unbalanced chemical equation and if we want to write this without the ionic charges we can go ahead and just write aluminum solid plus HCl AQ is gonna react I'm sorry is going to produce ALCl3 solid plus hydrogen gas and that is going to be our unbalanced chemical equation for the little word equation that we see up above. So let's go ahead and try some on your own now at this point. And so what I recommend that you do in, at this point in the video is go ahead and pause the video. Don't go forward. Don't fast forward. Don't cheat yourself. 
go ahead and pause the video and here are uh, five different word equations and go ahead and try to write the unbalanced chemical equation for each one of these and I'm gonna give you guys the answers in three two one zero here we go how did you guys do did you get these all correct if so then you're pretty good at writing unbalanced chemical equations and you understand what's going on if you like what you see go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner and that will subscribe you to my channel and feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comment section down below and i really hope you guys found this helpful